I thought I will uh, we will conduct it just like the DNB examination as as it is now, instead of uh, answering every every question because already we have discussed in detail the different tests, different examination. Now we are testing them and we'll tell them how to Im improvise on it and how the DNB examination is conducted because it is only DNB which is conducted on OSCE now, except right. one or two universities for MS. And uh, perhaps for the next time, there may be uh, two, three more, but we do not know whether they will stick on. Now, as such, uh, only four, uh, even in uh, DNB, only uh, this time orthopedics, pediatrics, obstetrics, gynecology, ENT, and ophthalmology are conducted by OSCE. All the others are conducted as it was done before. Right. So how it is conducted and how it is done and what are the marks which are given, they should know so that they are prepared for the examination part of it rather than the knowledge part of it. Because each knowledge, each one description of each will take by itself 10 to 15 minutes. They, they may have questions to ask and all that. So it will, it will all already each one of us, especially uh, Dr. Dimri and Dr. Gok Kumar have gone into detail with so all, almost all the tests. So it will be testing them now, how much they have really caught up. And they will, this is just as the OSCE examination DNB, it is not asked uh, out of, across the table. They, are, they put up a big screen there and they have to just write the answers and give it to the exam. Right. There is no interactive interactive session at all. That is the misfortune of it. Uh, but the fortune, uh, fortunate part of it is uh, this time the results were 93%. Because they, they, they write, it is like a theory exam report, it is very easy. They get either 100 marks or zero marks. So the first OSCE, this thing, many of them scored out of 150, nearly about 120 marks, 130 marks. So it is, it, it is not so. They will have to really now structure it, how to do it as per the OSCE, which was, which was the envisaged. Because OSCE was the envisaged in a very definitive manner, my manner. Though the marking system is very regular, but they could, there could be a small discussion. But here there is no discussion at all. The examiner doesn't ask anything, or, nor the, there is an interaction by the student. Okay. Actually, OSCE emphasizes on the communication skill, the understanding skill of the particular candidate. This is not tested in the present OSCE, which the DNB is conducting it. So that is the misfortune of it. So we will have to, we will have to write to the DNB board that these are the lacunae, so it has to be corrected because it won't be a true examination at all. It will be like a neat examination for the BUC because what you write, you get 100 marks or 99 marks. Yes. So it is not a clinical exam. In clinical examination, nobody can really get 100 marks. So there will be some flaws. So our, our OSCEs here are face to face. The examiner has got he can ask question and change a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's and, true. Unless, yeah. unless the examiner asks questions and he, and he, yeah. the, whether he understands why, why that particular test is undertaken and what mm -hmm. is the significance and what is, it may be a subsidiary question which may not carry marks in an OSCE. Yeah. So but the, still, the, the examiner will make the, the, understand the student whether he knows the subject or not. Yes. That, that he doesn't understand here with the present OSCE which is conducted by the DNB. So you'll have to write all the, all the institutions, you'll have to write to them that this is the lacunae. Or if you keep quiet, the results will be better. For the first time in the history of DNB, the results were 93%. I was the next examiner for many, many years. We had a, there were 20 or 30, 30% results. And we fought sometimes because it is not fair to fail a candidate, 20%, 30%. Because the clinical examination, long case, three short cases, like that, it was. But with the OSCE, it has changed. This time, all my boys passed. All the six of them passed. Congratulations. So, so it is all. It is like uh, it has to be. It has to be very. Uh, otherwise, the, the boys are very happy. Boys are uh, really happy. So, sir, over to you now. You can uh, uh, the way you want to do it. It's all. Yeah, to we will. We'll see if, if we can always modify it again. Uh, day, uh, Day after will be lower limb. We can modify it depending on the this thing whether Dr. Dimri and uh, the, the, all the all of you can give a definitive thought as to how to modify it, whether it is knowledge based or just examination based. We will have to do it. Okay. Yeah. Sir, yes. So you can do it the way you wish, sir. Yeah. We will. We will. Our leader will follow, sir. Yeah. We'll, we'll so we will all of students combine combine have an effective program. Yeah. Dear students. Uh, yeah. 
Yes, sure. Welcome to the session for uh, conceptual orthopedics. Oski by phenomenal uh, speaker and a teacher, Professor Dr. Shantaram Shetty, sir. We will talk about uh, clinical signs in upper limb. And I'll request uh, Dr. Ravinder Dimri, sir, to welcome, sir, and let's start the session. Dr. Dimri, sir. So thank you, Apoor. So it's a privilege uh, to be uh, listening to uh, Professor uh, Shetty. Not only uh, he has been an examiner and knows inside out what is happening in the examination board nowadays, but also a clinician of such a uh, vast and knowledge that uh, we will all benefit from it. So. With these words, I'm looking forward to his and uh, understanding what how toxic uh, oxygen is done in India, so that I can also uh, help with future preparation. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ravinder. Uh, it is a pleasure to see you, and uh, and it is a pleasure to see your uh, tenacity of purpose, especially that our youngsters should take it on, see, because uh, we see we do not many of us do not have that, and we should uh, cultivate your tenacity. Thank you very much again. Thank so, you, dear students, uh, what is OSCE? OSCE, as all of you know, is Objective Structured Clinical Examination. As the term denotes, it is objective, not subjective. So it is objective is very definitive where a goal is reached. And uh, a structured examination is structured. It is previously structured. It is not changed. And everything is, is almost structured and it is definitive and the answers are definitive and the mark, markings which the examiner makes is also definitive. And it is, uh, and, it is, and it is done very perfectly so that there is no leakage in the system and it is very secretive and it is done very definitively. It was way back in uh, 1975, Professor uh, Ronald Harden from the Dundee University Dundee University is a, is a center for uh, MCH, uh, MCH as well. Uh, but that apart, you know, it was he who wrote his first paper on how to conduct the OSCE examination. Later, the OSCE examination was uh, taken up in a little bigger way by, by the Canadians. And it is mostly for health-related subjects because it is a clinical examination oriented. So. It, it, more than the medical part of it and the medicine part of it, it, is, uh, it was taken up in a big way by the nursing, nursing colleges and also by all the, all the health allied uh, sciences. With the COVID, so much of change has taken place all over the world, as all of you know. The COVID has made us, uh, made us really change our way of life and so is the examination. It is lucky many times on the students part of it that the, uh, the OSCE system has come to you as a part of the clinical examination instead of your old time having four, the, the four cases one long and three short cases and each one having a different type of cases and each one 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 has a spine and one has a hip and one has one has a one has a multiple involvement involvement so it was not very fair examination a clinical examination because one who gets a hip examination with the flexion adduction internal rotation of the hip joint is there much more easier for him than a neurological deficit in a clinical examination where his upper motor is lower, lower motor whether the, what's the level of the lesion and and all that all that problems and the markings of the examiner also used to vary and the fancy of the examiner also used to take into used to be taken into consideration but OSCE examination is very structured. Even the markings, if you answer correct, no examiners can deny you, no examiner can deny you of the two marks which is due to you. So it, it has to be given. At the same time, if you're totally wrong, you will get a zero percent. So you will have to understand the clinical examination. We are conducting this, we are conducting this particular, another one hour, on how the OSCE examination is being conducted in the DNB examination today. Unfortunately, it is not like the original OSCE, which uh, Professor Ronald Harden emphasized, 
or which was taken up later by the Canadian, Canadian school or many of the universities. This to suit to the needs of the present COVID system, they have modified it that instead of uh, the, uh, instead of uh, one to one, usually in OSCE there is to be 15, 15 uh, different stations and the students go from one place to the ne next station and each station is allotted 10 to 15 minutes and he goes to the next station and the next and the next on different subjects. Whereas here, as it is conducted by the DNB, since most all of you will be, most of you will be, will be on OSCE in the same system, where in a, in a large board outside, a large board in the examination, the, the questions should be asked. And all that you have to go is go to the first station and write the answer and see that the answer paper is given. Unfortunately, there is no interactive session. So we, we lose the interactivity between the examiner and the student. What we lose is we do not understand the communication skill of the particular candidate. We do not understand the depth of clinical knowledge of a particular candidate. We do not understand whether he has diagnosed it correctly or what he will do. Because in, especially in an orthopedic examination, clinical examination becomes easy. Many times what happens is the management part. Management of part. So the, just to give an example, the, 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 in, when, we, when we are structuring the OSCE examination, what is the cause of Perthes disease was the question. And one, two, three, four, tuberculosis, the, 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 the vascularity is lost, and the four, four answers were given. The student answers, the first answers is he answers tuberculosis. That means he doesn't understand. He doesn't know what is Perthes disease. But the second question asked was, what is the radiological features? Radiological features, he describes very perfectly, Cox Avara with the, with the, with the, uh, the fragmentation and revascularization. He gets two marks. That is, that is the disparity. If it is just a one word answer which is written. So the students, but the examiner should be able to examine the candidates very thoroughly to make him understand that this student deserves a pass to be a consultant in orthopedics tomorrow so that the basic understanding of the subject should be understood very well.